Hey guys, here are my predictions for the 2019 AQA Biology Paper 2. Now my predictions for this paper last year were very, very good. I was, when I saw that paper, I was like, yes, well done. And you know, everyone that watched my video and did the predicted paper that I wrote got a massive, massive boost in the exam because they revised the stuff that came up in the exam. But you have to remember that I am not an examiner. These are just predictions. I do not know exactly what is going to come up in this year's exam. Um, please revise absolutely everything to help you revise absolutely everything. And, you know, if I'm right, it will be really, really good revision. Over my website, I've written you a load of predictive papers which are available for immediate download. We know that 10% of your biology grade is going to come from maths in science things. So in this paper, we need to think, be thinking about surface areas, we need to be thinking about reaction times. We could be talking about percentage increase, percentage decrease, percentage change. This maths would fit really, really in well with lots of the practicals. Last year, the maths in biology wasn't done very well. People were forgetting obvious things, like there are 360 degrees in a circle. Do not let the fact that this is a science exam, or any science exam, freak you out and make you forget the fact that you can do really, really good maths. Now the practical in last year's exam wasn't done very well. The examiner said that students seemed unfamiliar with the practical, like some of them hadn't done it, or like you'd just done it in class and then not revised it at all. We know the lessons from last year that just doing the practical once isn't going to be enough to get you those grades. That just learning the method enough isn't going to get you those grades. There is so much more you need to be able to do. So there are a couple of practicals that I think might come up in this year's paper. So reaction time and plant responses. Now both of these were relatively simple practicals. The reaction time one, if you did that in class, you might have just done it really, really quickly. But could you take the method for that and rewrite it for something completely different? Could you be given a new situation for plant responses and then be able to cope with that easily in the exam? These are the sort of things that I've really tried to focus on, that I've really tried to prepare you for when I wrote this year's predictive papers. Now there are some really nice, some really big topics that lend themselves really, really well to six markers in this paper. Now learning things a six mark question is a great technique. Not only can you really, really practice your six mark question technique, but if it then does come up as a two mark question, or a three mark question, or a four mark question, or an eight mark question, then you still know all the knowledge, you just need to apply it in a slightly different way. It is much easier to learn things as a six mark question and then break them down into smaller bits, as opposed to just learning the key facts in one or two mark question and then having to practice building it up in the exam. If you do your revision learning the techniques for six mark questions, it's much easier to go the other way. Homeostasis and negative feedback. Both of these are brilliant six mark questions, which were touched upon. Negative feedback was, you know, could be linked to what came up last year in the menstrual cycle, but these are really, really lovely questions that are really going to test whether you understand the biology. Mitosis came up last year, so while it's really worth still learning that, meiosis didn't. So this could be one that they focus on this year. I absolutely love drone genetic crosses. There are lots and lots of examples they can use. There are lots and lots of skills that they can test with genetic crosses. Now with this, remember the examples that you've done in class, probably going to be cystic fibrosis, sickle cell anemia, Huntington's disease. The skills that you have learnt while doing the genetic crosses for those, expect those to occur in a new situation. Expect to be given a unknown disease where you know it's going to be recessive or dominant and then expect 
that if that comes up, you're going to have to take what you know and apply it to a new situation. We know the exam is going to be full of novel situations and examples that you haven't been given before. And doing a genetic cross is a brilliant way to actually show off your skills in a new situation. Parts of the ecology topic that they didn't really touch upon much last year are going to be biotic and abiotic factors and then food chains and food webs. This could be a really, really nice six mark question, or it could link back to the maths and be like a graph interpretation question. It could be an area or volume question, um, a ratios uh, question, a percentage change question. There were lots and lots of different things they could do with this. They love, always love graph questions, drawing graphs and interpreting graphs. Remember, if you're asked to interpret graphs, give examples in what you do. So the graph was flat and then it went up and then it went flat again. Use numbers. This is always going to be really, really helpful. So there are a few things that I think might come up in this year's uh, exam. To go with this, there are the predictive papers over on my website. There are this year's ones, there are last year's ones. Do as many papers as you can. Go to the examples website, download the specimen papers, download last year's actual papers. The more practice you get answering exam questions, the more prepared you're going to be as you go into the exams. Exam questions, workbooks, everything you can get your hands on. Combined science people, good luck guys. Um, I am going to be producing loads and loads of stuff for you. Separate science people, we have a few more things to go over. Now biology paper one it didn't have a lot of extra topics just for separate science. It is all in biology paper two. So there are lots of extra topics here that you need to cover that you didn't necessarily need to cover for biology paper one. So we can expect there to be much much more of a, a skew to these topics combined compared to the combined science. So we're talking about decay, the extra practical that was in there. Lots and lots of things about water and then a lovely, lovely question about the eye. Now the eye used to be in physics and when it was in physics it came up every other year, label the eye, label the eye, label the eye, every other year. And this is a brilliant question, which is actually in last year's predictive paper for separate science. A big thing they could ask about is plant hormones, and then an absolutely massive section in this is the structure of DNA, the structure of proteins, and how they work. It could be related to mutations, it could be related to um, homeostasis, meiosis, lots and lots of other things. Things. And then lastly, sustainability. This is such an important and relevant topic in today's um, society, in today's culture, that I think this is a really, really hot topic to ask. So please revise absolutely everything. Uh, please look after yourselves. Good luck, guys. Ouch! This is why in some videos I have unexplained scratches.